welcome to the brand new Codex and Coffee podcast. Um, I'm Rach, also known as the Warhammer Girl over on Instagram, and I'm joined by my co-host Josh, otherwise known as War Hipster. Hello, Josh. Hello. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm very good. It's Thursday, so I'm feeling pretty excited for the weekend, because um, my weekend, they are usually filled with painting. Now, that sounds like a weird thing to be excited about, but what I've decided to do this year is, on weekends, I'm going to try to actually paint my own toys rather than someone else's. (laughs) So I'm excited to paint something that isn't for someone else. That said, this week I've been painting Endless Dragons, and I'm, uh, you know, I'm excited because I love dragons. I'm excited today because we're recording this for the first time. Hey. So, you know, and dragons don't fit into this. I don't know how to marry the two things up. I've got these oh, two I'm sure, streams. I'm sure we could uh, figure out some sort of plan to get dragons involved eventually. Well, that would be lovely. Can I can I use my dragons as um, Imperial Knights proxies? Would that be allowed? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Cool. That, yeah. You know, I'll just I'll just I'll just you know I'll just be like yes that that dragons lightning flame breath whatever it's going to be called yes that is a volcano cannon what is your problem sir oh dear i've just lost my train of thought now i knew this would happen we just start recording and then just get into a general chat and it would probably feature your dragons and i'm sure you've only just painted three dragons or was that longer ago than i thought uh yeah no that's exactly right and you know i will insist on derailing every conversation by bringing up dragons i'm sorry that's just it's just what i do um, what the people want really it is let's give the people what they want with this I mean, podcast to be honest the key here everyone listening is to just keep this quite relaxed um we're not gonna sort of try and sound really robotic and literally just read out uh codices to you so hopefully you enjoy the format and hopefully don't get irritated by us going on lots of tangents and Josh's incessant discussions about his dragons. <laughs> well, I mean, when you first when you first were like talking about the idea of of, of doing this uh, podcast, I did try to derail it by saying, "Can't we just call it Man and Woman Reads Book?" And then we just, you know, take it a sentence at a time. But you quite wisely said, "There's already enough people doing that on the internet. Let's maybe not." Um, let's t- let's try and talk about coffee as well. And I was like, "Well, I don't really know much about coffee." So, I mean, I don't really. I drink it, but I'm not a coffee expert. So I think our coffee discussions will be limited unless someone specifically requests that we discuss it further. <laughs> I suspect they will. Because yeah. my partner, Anna, she suggested that what we also do, and, I, and I'm going to bring this to you live for the first time on the recording, and let us know at home what you think. But if, if once we've been through a codex that we also come up with a coffee recommendation to go with said codex, like a wine list, yes, but like a coffee list. That is a fantastic idea, and we should definitely do that. You know, like you could say, like, the Drakari Codex, we recommend black coffee because it's bitter. and <laughs> Like their of... souls. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah, like their souls. And the tears of your opponents when they have to face it. I'm now literally going to just spend the rest of this podcast trying to think up names for, well, think up types of coffee to go with different armies. Um, I think that's the most sensible thing to do, quite frankly. We we digress. Um, So a little bit about the background of this podcast and sort of what the plan is going forward. Um, I mean, it's a pretty short story, really, about how it came up. Um, I... A lot of you listening might have actually seen this on my Instagram if you follow me. Um, But I was basically sitting on my balcony, uh, reading my Necrons Codex, drinking a coffee. And I sort of posted this on Instagram as a bit of a joke. I half was actually genuinely thinking this would be a great uh, podcast name because I obviously just wrote Codex and Coffee to quite literally describe what was in the photo. (laughs) Um, And then a lot of you um, lovely people messaged me and said, you have to do it, you have to do it. Um, And me being me and as such a newbie in the hobby, I was terrified to do it on my own. So I thought, who better than to ask than War Hipster? Um, So hopefully 
you enjoy going forward. But I think, I mean, in terms of the actual plan for it is to each episode sort of go through um, a particular codex and we'll also have a special guest on, um, you know, who who knows quite a lot about, about that army. Um, and Josh has a lot of knowledge as well. I, on the other hand, know pretty much minimal minimal even my necrons i don't i've only read the codex maybe well i say read picked up the codex maybe four or five times um so i mean if any of you are new to the hobby i think this would be quite helpful for you because i think it's going to be helpful for me as well so definitely and i think it's always helpful for you know old war horses like myself to listen to (laughs) stuff like this as well because you know the the I I have been doing this for so long now. The length of time I have been doing Warhammer is 25 years, going on 26 years. So, you know, my Warhammer career is now old enough to, you know, rent a car in the States and stuff like that. Like, it can do what... It, legally, it can do anything it wants across the globe. So, from my perspective, when I you know when when new books and stuff come out i get these ninth edition rules as crazy it might sound to some people at home i get the ninth edition rules sometimes confused with stuff from third edition so like for example (laughs) well i was like i was it was the gray knights codex and i asked someone oh the rules for servo skulls still in there and they went what and i was like (laughs) oh hang on that's that's like that's like fourth or fifth edition Grey Knights, well it wasn't Grey Knights at the time it was Codex Demon Hunters and it was insanely broken and it was very very good and I accidentally played Demon Hunters at the time um, so I, I, for me the Grey Knights that's how they play it's it's that from oh I was 16 so uh, that a long been, time ago yeah that would have been 15 <laughs> years ago so like when I when I when I when I see these <laughs> when whenever these new books come out, I'm like, no, it's different, uh, and then I, I don't retain it. So um, this is going to be really useful for me as well, I think, um, and I hope that I can impart some of my um, relevant knowledge because you really don't need to know what the bizarre rules of fifth, sixth, seventh, fourth, third second edition Warhammer 40,000 were because you just don't you just Maybe don't some people do who knows um no I was going to ask actually like with the something I don't know is with the different editions like how mm. much is it a completely new like, I genuinely don't know how it works and I find this quite embarrassing to admit but I am very new in the hobby so mm. for example how different like is you know, for example, ninth edition to eighth edition, is there like a massive difference or is it just like tweaks or what are we talking? Between ninth edition and eighth edition, there aren't many changes. Not really. Like, it, depending on how you choose to enjoy Warhammer, so whether that's through competitive play at tournaments or um, matched play at your local club or pick up games using matched play rules, there's a couple of fundamental differences between ninth and eighth stuff like um, secondaries and how the missions are played and yeah. stuff like that. But fundamentally, oh, and I suppose the terrain rules just got super complicated as well between eighth and ninth. Because in eighth edition, the terrain rules were if you're in it, you get plus one to your save. That was it. And end of that was the rule. And um, that was nice and simple, but caused a lot of arguments because there was a lot of interpretation about what being in it meant. Right. Um, So there were lots of people who thought being in it meant the back of my base is touching the front of the wall, which means I'm technically in it. So I'm getting the cover save, um, even though our two models are literally facing each other like this. But because I'm touching the back wall, I am I'm in cover. So. It's a weird interpretation. It's probably a rules as intended versus rules as written thing. But the transition between 8th and 9th ultimately isn't too big. The transition between 7th and 8th was enormous. See, what I'm worried about is just learning all this stuff and then it completely changing because I think that will be the end of me, really, because this is just so much to learn. And like this is one of the reasons that we wanted to do this podcast 
Mm. was because I think it is very overwhelming. Um, obviously, for someone like you that's been in it for so long, um, it's I can imagine it's still overwhelming at times, you know, when they release all this new stuff. Yeah, yeah, it can be. It can be. It, it's, I mean, I, I can't see this format of the game changing too much um, because it's a very popular format. Um, this format of the game that we're playing right now, ninth and eighth edition is based on what well, it actually pretty much is a direct port um, from age of Sigma. So the okay. age of Sigma game is pretty much the same. Um, it, there's, there's, I mean, there's fundamental differences like in, in age of Sigma, you don't have a strength or a toughness value. It's just on the date on your uh, war scroll, which is a data okay. sheet in 40k. It just yeah. says this sword is a three plus to hit, uh, a three plus to hit, four plus to wound. Doesn't matter what you're what you're oh, swinging okay. it at. It's right. very simple. But fundamentally, the two games are pretty much the same. The core mechanics of it are pretty much the same. So like, they're not going to change it because they've gone from seventh edition was a seventh edition was a. It was a realistic battle simulator, <laughs> basically, is what it was. And so, basically, editions one to seven were basically like a, a layering on of rules until the point of where the game got a bit too... The core rules of the game got a bit too bloated. And then they've just gone, nope, we're just going to we're just gonna cut it all down and we're going to go back to basics on a nice simple game and i don't that's not going to happen for a while and by the time that that has to happen rachel you'll be so experienced that you'll be starting a podcast to tell me about how to play 40k I because mean, i'll have become I... old and decrepit and obsessed with age of oh. sigma more so than i already am okay i promise to do that um i mean i highly doubt it's ever actually going to happen because i still feel very overwhelmed and yeah i mean there is a lot to go through in terms of when we do these um each codex in terms of the gameplay but one one idea we had um which i don't know it might change or if you guys prefer it this way we'll keep it but is i know uh, we appreciate obviously some of you won't be sort of interested in the gaming side um and more interested in the law so the idea was to have you know an episode for example on necrons um but split it into two parts to that episode so the first part on for example the law um, obviously with a little bit of gameplay involved because it's probably going to end up coming up, um, but predominantly focus on the law. And then obviously the second one on the gameplay, um, again, obviously the law will definitely come into that bit. But um, yes. but yeah, obviously we'll start with that. If it doesn't work, then we'll change it. But I think hopefully that gives you guys the option of which ones you want to listen to without having to sort of either stop halfway through an episode or fast forward halfway through an episode to get to the bit you want. So that's... Um, well, that's it just makes it a little bit easier to cut it down, doesn't it? Uh, it's yeah. you know, just yeah. a slightly nicer, slightly nicer format, I think. You know, because I, I, you know, when I read a codex, I read it cover to cover, which I know is a shocking revelation for a lot of people I out there right now. I believe it when you told me that. <laughs> I, 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 the thing is, this is sort of what I thought I was going to do, and... I just can't do it. I mean, it hurts my hands. I know you've said you've got the same problem because you hold hold the book in such a... Yeah. yeah. I mean, you guys can't see this now, but Josh is demonstrating how he holds a codex. And, I have uh, the glasses in the right place as well at the tip of my nose because <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm quite frequently... I, I don't... Because I, the more... I, so this is the thing. Rather than change the way I hold the book which would make sense. What I've realised is I can read it for longer without my wrist hurting by holding it lower, but to do that, it does mean that my glasses come to the tip of my nose, which do, does age me by about 15 years. Um, yes, I, I can confirm that is correct uh, from what I'm witnessing right now. <laughs> for everyone wondering how I hold the book, you're all going to go, oh, no, I do that as well. It's literally one hand, middle of the book, uh, uh, where your thumb holds the page open you're holding the spine so it's like you know you're giving a sermon at church yeah guys please please let us know in any feedback whether you in fact do do this um i might do some sort of poll for those of you who are on instagram to see if josh is on his own or if a lot of you do it i'm assuming i mean i do that as well 
Um, well, maybe, so I'm assuming it's common. Maybe what we should do, and we'll get to it in a minute, but when we're, when we're talking about like the meat and potatoes of this particular episode, we should do a section on the, the safe way to handle a book. Disclaimer. Because, because I, because you know, let's let's you know, let's you know, like any all new job. All about the health and safety. All about the health and safety. Yeah, like any like any new job. Get the health and safety out of the way. Do your manual handling. Do your data protection. Do you know uniform <laughs> policy? All of that. We probably need to do a diversity podcast as well, but we'll do that later. Um, you know, just just you know. For the sake of, because we know we're starting a new organisation here, and we have to make sure that we're compliant in the eyes of the law. Well, I suddenly feel a lot of pressure, so I might just uh, leave this to someone else to do the podcast with you. It's literally <laughs> your idea, and now I'm sat here. Going, I know can I have can't. Fun, yeah, but uh, can... this is going to be organised fun. Okay, let's make oh, sure that fantastic. Yeah, it's all codified. But That's... the one thing, oh, nice, nice pun there. I know, right? <laughs> I'm on fire tonight. The one thing I will suggest to people about, you know, when I say I read a codex from cover to cover, is whatever codex you've got nearby, if you have one, obviously we're not excluding anyone who doesn't have codexes, but these ninth edition codexes, just open the first page. Just open the first page, because there's usually a little, little paragraph just there, and just read that, because it's always really cool. I've got the Custodes one in front of me, and I've read it several times because I think it's excellent. Um, I could read it out now, but I guess we'll do that in a little bit. But, you yes, know, yeah. it's just it's just always page for always page one. Uh, so, you know, anyway, we are going to get into that in, in just in just shortly. But I think, yeah, I, I, I like the idea of splitting it in it, splitting these episodes in twain because yeah. uh, it um, it does feel it feels nicer because I'll in, I'll enjoy the narrative bit more than the rules. <laughs> I mean, so will I. So hopefully every guest we get on will be a rules fanatic. Um. Generally they are. The ones the, the ones that we've talked about and the ones that I know, they love their rules. Ooh, I know boy. exactly who you're talking about. We yeah. won't name names. No, we won't. Eventually you will find out. Um, but yeah, so I think, you know, I think we've covered most of the plan. I'm probably forgetting some massive thing... Can you think of anything, Josh, that we haven't covered in terms of what we're hoping to achieve? Not really. I, I, I think we've I think we've set the scene. I think if I think if if folks right now aren't champing at the bit to get into you know the real <laughs> gristle of the podcast, you know all that stuff, then they'll have turned off by now. And that's true. That's, that's true. all good. You Hopefully. Know nobody's turned off i'll be very sad um but yeah so well let's get into it to be honest. so we have our first guest and i mean i really shouldn't call him a guest because he's actually in charge of our graphics uh, if you've seen our little logo on our instagram page and hopefully on the platform platform i can't speak platform you're listening on now um, and he also very cleverly produced our epic jingle, which you should have heard. Um, and he's also my fiance. So we've got Jack uh, joining us to sort of discuss, uh, you know, what's in a codex, et cetera, et cetera. Um, otherwise known as I am, is it scald? I should probably know this being in a relationship with you. Basically, <laughs> just, just pronounce it I am scald every time, like your Groot. <laughs> There are other multiverses available, um, but it is I am scald. It'll be a very odd thing to try and introduce yourself as. It's like, what's your Instagram handle? I am scald. Like, no, <laughs> no. What's what's your Instagram handle? Uh, I am scald. <laughs> how many how many people have just looked up scald? What for Ben's assistance or just in general? <laughs> you know, Instagram. God. Like you've gone, I am scald, and, I, and everyone's just gone, okay, cool, scald. No, no, it's I am, no, no, I am scald. Yeah, no, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for scald, and I can't find it. Now. No, no, yeah. it, I yeah. am scald. Oh, right. Oh, wait, hang on. You type it in for me because this is far too confusing for me. <laughs> Obviously, I'm just entirely adept at social media, so <laughs> this is what's happened. What shall I call myself? I'll put I am in it. That'll that'll solve it. <laughs> that'll make it easier. That'll make things golden. Yeah, so if anyone has any uh, u different username suggestions for Jack here, 
that would be greatly appreciated because um, I have been trying for a long time to get him to change it, but that might just be me. Could you change it to the Warhammer Scald? The Warhammer Boy. <laughs> oh, do not change it to the Warhammer Boy. <laughs> I feel like that has less sort of, you know, <laughs> potential than the Warhammer Boy. You could be the Warhammer boy, the Warhammer girl, and then when you're married, you get a joint account, and it's just the Warhammer couple. Oh, God. Yeah, that's Team no. Warhams. Team yeah. Warhams. We've hit new lows here, I think. With, like, three Zs at the end, Warhams. Warhams. <laughs> and then an underscore somewhere, because that's the Xbox tag everyone always had. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Yes, you have to have an underscore. And then, like, a, a completely made-up number that somehow means something to someone somewhere. Or if you're unimaginative like me, it's just your date of birth. <laughs> well, then, well, you don't want yeah, to don't don't start spreading that around. People, are gonna, people will go and look up your old Xbox tag to discover your yeah. date of birth, so they can use that to find out what your password is for certain, certain things. Oh, no, don't worry, it's changed. For anyone who wants to know, it's jackinabox underscore 0703. There you go. Add me. <laughs> is, that, is, that just a, uh, is, that, is that just a Microsoft account? Uh, no, that was genuinely my original Xbox tag. Um, I think it's been lost to the either. I don't know where, where to reclaim such things, but... Because <laughs> I have an Xbox... We've completely deviated. But, um, I have an Xbox account... But I I can't I I don't have an Xbox anymore. But I discovered it the other day. It's funny the things you find. Yeah, I was I was looking through my email inbox and it was like, hey, blah 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 blah. Um, you know, check out your gamer score. And I was like, wait, what? And I went and logged <laughs> in, and it's it's all still there. But it's been inactive since the PlayStation Four came out because that's when I got rid of my Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. So I was just oh, like. Right why does this stuff still exist? I may be a traitor, but at the time it was the right decision. <laughs> we won't we won't look at your past self with such judgment, don't worry. <laughs> that would be Only a tiny bit of judgment. Just a just a teeny tiny bit. So my first 40k army was ultramarines. No, I'm not gonna keep <laughs> unfriended immediately. <laughs> <laughs> immediately bin him. Mine was Tau though, so I mean we're both in the same boat, really. Well, my, my actual first one was Necrons. You'll be pleased to hear, Rachel. Yes. This is why we're friends. Very, very friends. you're first. a cool person and did Necrons. That's not no. to say any of you that don't do Necrons aren't cool, by the way. Just just going to put that disclaimer out there. Is it... Can I be like... Because like my, my first ever model was a Necron model. Um, it was a free one that came in White Dwarf. It was like the first ones ever. Like it's a metal one. If you've ever seen them, you might not have done. But they're just these. They're. I mean, they've got so much charm when you look at them now, and they look nothing like they do now, obviously. But it was just like this robotic man with his arm out one way and holding his gun up in the air, and he's all squat and like hunched down like this, looking like he's you know taking a dump at his armor, that type of thing. As it, you do. As you, as you do, as you do, as Necrons are wont to do. Um, but um, yeah, that, that was my first it. ever model. I have it somewhere. I've no idea where it is, though. I have to. See. Oh, that's such a shame. I really, really want to see this now. Because I've got the old, I've got the old scarab as well. That you used to get one scarab, and that was your, that was your scarab swarm. One scarab. And it was like oh. it was like it was about the size of a thumbnail. It was just this metal. I mean, it looked terrible, but like this metal box thing that was about the size of a thumbnail. It didn't come with a base. You just left it on the ground and just moved it around and did stuff with it. Your pet scarab. Yeah. Like a pet rock, but metal. <laughs> and I had no idea what was going on at the time. I just had a, I just had a Necron and it was cool. I, re I really, you have to go on a uh, search for this now. I have to see it. And I think everyone listening will also want to see it. So that is your task for the week. I'll have a hunt. I'll have a hunt. Because I've got, I've, it was this year when I received, well received, I was forced, well, I say forced, I went and collected all of my old Warhammer from my parents. Because um, I didn't take it all with me to uni when I moved up many moons ago. Um, I left quite a lot of it at home. 
Uh, and then when I got to university, I received a uh, I received a student loan. And you know what I did with that student loan? I went and bought more Warhammer, baby. That's exactly what I did. Of course I did, because well, yeah. that's the sensible thing to do. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I had this joyful um, thing last year of my mum and dad just being like, it's all in those boxes. And I was like, cool. And they went, yeah. And those boxes need to not be here by the end of today. And I was like, well, where are they going to go? And they were like, to your house, obviously, you fool. <laughs> and I was like, oh, right, yeah, okay. So, um, yeah, I've got, I've got all those boxes here. I've just no idea where that first ever model is. If I don't still have it in one of those boxes, I think I might know where it is. But I know that in those boxes I've got, like, stuff like the first ever Lord of the Rings miniature I painted. And, like, my old, old, old orcs and stuff like a Chaos Warrior that I painted when I was, like, seven. And, you know, it's just stuff like that. I know in that box there's a lot of that kind of stuff. I've actually also got my first ever Blood Angel, and it is a terrible mess. Um, I shared a photo of oh, that, you're actually. revealing all of this because, obviously, we just want to see all of this now. So You can see yeah. the Blood Angel. You can see the Blood Angel. He's on my Instagram. If you scroll back oh. in time back in time to last year and because Wait, of the amount of pictures the amount of pictures i post that's quite a few pictures to uh to scroll yeah, through. it might take an hour or so to scroll through yeah okay. <laughs> but worth it because it's all full of beautiful art right definitely it's definitely worth exactly. it exactly exactly yes if you haven't checked out uh josh's <laughs> page please go and see it i'm sure all of you listening will have um but in case you haven't go and check it out it's war hipster um, much better than my page and he definitely wants to plug himself there so that that sounds a bit dodged <laughs> yeah he loves plugging himself though it's fine oh yeah always any opportunity to plug myself i was bringing a lot of confident energy there that i don't normally bring now i do want to warn the listeners right now that occasionally very occasionally what you'll hear me do is suddenly have belief in myself and then i'll be like <laughs> hey look at how amazing i am and then immediately after i'll want to follow up with but everybody else is of course really really great and there's plenty of people out there better than me why would you ever want to listen to or partake in any of my content so you're um, doing yourself yeah. an injustice yeah i'm you're enjoying that talented. phase though you're saying i am a god <laughs> yeah <laughs> now, basically uh, josh is uh, saying he is a god uh, to summarise that <laughs> I think what I'm actually saying is I'm ready to fight god or become him yes trial by combat to assume the mantle yeah I am Scarbrand <laughs> is that your new Instagram handle <laughs> I am I am Scarbrand <laughs> I am Skullbrand there you go god, I am Skullbrand there you yes, go yes <laughs> <laughs> What were we even talking about? I can't. I was literally trying to remember. No, I think we were just going to sort of talk about codexes. I think we were going to, yeah. I keep saying codexes. It's definitely codices, isn't it? Well, there is a lot of debate about this. Oh. (laughs) Mm. Because, yes, I think scientifically, if you want to listen to what those, those, you know, experts on the internet have to say, that, yes, the plural of codex is codices. But in Warhammer, it might not be. Okay, well, that does not make me any less confused about which. No, I know. And I think that's because, yes, the plural of codex is codices. Yeah. Right? But so many people in Warhammer say codexes. And I don't know. In fact, we could have a look at. um, No, the best way to do this right now, I'm going to do it live. I'm going to go to Warhammer Community. Yeah, so this is our first lesson of the podcast, is how to actually correctly say the plural of codex. So yeah. I hope you find this. That's exactly right. Everyone knows high gothic, and if anyone can actually speak it fluently, then please let us know, because then this will, be, <laughs> <laughs> this will be sort of quelled immediately. Well, this will be where we have to, like, you know, like... Do you know what? My, uh, one, of my, one of my bestest friends in the whole wide world... Um, he 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 didn't he re, he revealed to me just how much I'd been saying lots of things wrong in Warhammer my entire life. Um it's a refreshing moment. And and he yeah, and he explained why, like the roots of language and stuff. So stuff like you know Skitari. 
as part of the the, the Adeptus Mechanicus. You don't call them Skitari. You call them Skitari I. Ah, uh, that bloody Latin again. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> it is Skitari I because that's the plur- that's the plural, and I think that as a, a single of them would be Skitarus. It. It was a fascinating thing that I don't remember most of what he said or the, the reasons why. I just remember how I'm actually supposed to pronounce things. Where is the article I'm thinking of? Because there was one where they said there's multiple codexes or codices coming out. Let's have a look. This week's pre-orders include a double-decker codex drop. Ah, there we go. Warhammer Community says the first codexes of 2022. That is it. That's the official... Oh. The official... I can't believe I've changed how I say it and now it's actually wrong. So it's definitely codexes. The official Warhammer way of pronouncing multiple plural codex is codexes. That is what they're See, saying. If you're still Scientifically, it's wrong. You learned something new. Well, maybe you haven't and you knew that all along. But if you're like me and thought it was codices, then there we go. We've there already go. imparted some knowledge onto you. Codexes. Appreciate it. it's not the most thrilling fact. But... <laughs> Okay. A small a small nugget <laughs> of information has been dropped upon your forehead. <laughs> Guys, have you heard that new podcast, Code and Coffee? <laughs> what they do is they have one of them Google stuff and then they read out the correct pronunciation <laughs> of words. It's so good. It's riveting content. I was on the so edge clever. of my seat. <laughs> so clever. They said at the beginning it wasn't going to be man reads book, man and woman reads book. No, it was going to be man and woman read internet. <laughs> <laughs> I almost passed out from the euthoria of that, to be honest. I, was... <laughs> I can tell, I can tell. You were just like, you know, you were wavering in your chair there. Just, uh, just yeah, a I wondered moment, what but... was wrong. Oh, no, that's my generic instability. I mean, that, there's, there's more to it. <laughs> there you go. There you go. The official pronunciation so, of multiple. So now we know it's codexes um, yep. leads me into sort of as Josh referred it to, uh, the meaty part of the podcast, I believe yeah. he said. Meat and um, potatoes, the gristle, the potato- ballast, the, the main course, a lot of it's food related. Um, I mean, is it a main course? I mean, oh, what we basically want to do is, um, for my sake as well, um, hopefully, obviously, this will help you guys listening, um, is just to have sort of a quick discussion on codexes in general um Mm -hmm. there's a lot in there i mean to be honest with you there's a lot of stuff in there that i i mean not even aware of being in there i don't really know what it is i mean in terms of my own knowledge um i'm sure josh and jack are about to share lots of nuggets of wisdom with me but i mean as far as i know this sort of the overarching law um this law of like different characters in the army, the rules, the data sheets. And is there a bit of points at the back? Yeah. I believe. Um, I'm sure I've missed out like pretty much most of it, but that that's as far as my knowledge goes. Um got pretty good there, I think. I mean oh. that's pretty much it. Yeah. We can end the podcast. Yeah. Goodbye guys. And that is it. What's in the codex? Well that and there we go. So next week we'll just read out the contents <laughs> of Codex Necrons and there you go. Jobs are good. And... No, I think it's um it's really hard to approach it though for because I I've obviously sat there and watched Rach try and try and read the codex. And I think as a beginner going into it, um you, you sit up there and go, Well, which bits of this do I actually care about? Um, exactly. especially if you're being told you need to play games you think mm. do i bother with this law i mean what does this even mean what is this sort of unstable i don't know enmitic destructor type weapon or what is this um but i think it's really important you read the first bit because that will give you context for when it comes up with some bizarre warhammer word in the actual um data sheets towards the back of what a, a model carries you'll go mm. Oh, actually, I understand now that this is actually based in some context rather than just being some outrageously stupid word to pronounce. Um, And you'll have a bit more context to it. But yeah, I mean, the law is also fantastic. It's the prime reason why I play is just because I like to um, not play competitively and just play. Mm. Like me, who is driven. hyper competitive at everything. You are. I mean, we played a couple of 500 point battles in our, in our spare room, and um, Rach just sit there rolling sort of triple sixes. <laughs> I'm thinking, that what am I trying true. to marry? That is slander. <laughs>
Not true. <laughs> it's not on camera, so it didn't happen. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Until you go to a tournament, Rach, and then it will happen in front of other people. I'll be fine at a tournament. I think the thing is playing at home, you're in a safe space. You know that nothing you can say will have any consequences. Well, it depends what you say, but most things. Just so, on my, my esteem and self-pride <laughs> and, you know, my emotions. You Not see, you he's care. making me out to be a dragon, but I'm really not, I promise. Oh, no, don't get Josh started on dragons again. Go on. I was just thinking that when I said it. I was like, oh, no, I've opened yeah, the doorway cause... again. So the best thing about uh, battle tomes is um, <laughs> that quite often they contain godlike beings or dragons. <laughs> um, you know, the new Stormcast Eternals battle tome gifted us with not one, not two, but three <laughs> new dragons. And then you had the original Star Drake, who's not technically a dragon. He is a Star Drake. That's a different thing. I love how you have literally gone off on a dragon rant. This is not Battle Tomes in Bovril. We don't need to have that sort of liquid Battle Tomes in Bovril. Please, somebody set up a podcast called Battle Tomes in Bovril. I think I think our next. uh, I think we should change it now to Battle Tomes in Bovril. Quick segue into a different realm entirely, and we've been this idea off. See you later, chaps. Oh, cheers, cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. Hi everyone, it's the War Hipster here, coming at you with a brand new podcast. Today we are starting off Battle Tomes and Bovril. I'm joking. We're still doing. <laughs> we're still doing codexes, codex and copy. Can, can I join you on that one? It sounds much better. I mean, <laughs> right, and that's and me signing off. It's been lovely talking to you guys. Listening. Goodbye. <laughs> so thank you very much for the idea, Rachel. We don't need you anymore. We're just going to uh, do yeah, Battle and Bovril instead. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> oh, dear. Right, where were, where were we? This seems to be the running theme of this uh, intro episode. It's just nonsense, isn't it? I think we were just saying like what you can actually read in a codex and what's useful and what's not. But I think even though people find it really weird that Josh reads a... Um, a, a codex from start to finish i think that's the only way to do it really i i do the same it might take me a while because i get sidetracked by shiny objects and um just gem- general motion in the room but um mm. yeah it's, it's definitely the way to do it the advice i think definitely changes based on who i'm giving that advice to if you see what i mean because like for me, reading these these ninth edition these ninth edition books. So as I've said, I've got the Adeptus Custodes book here in my hand, and actually, what I was just doing a second ago was I was adding up how many pages there were of rules and how many pages there were of 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 background narrative stuff. Um, and actually, there's more rules in this if you include Crusade. If you don't include Crusade, then there's there's less. But like, there's more rules in this than than there are of 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 narrative background which is actually surprising to me but one of the things that the reason i like to read the codexes from start to finish is because i like to see what's changed or what's new so like the space marines codex which we will do an episode on later i was really excited for the ninth edition codex because there were so many new units the thing i was most excited about was how all of those new units fit into the organizational structure I can see that I'm losing Rachel, but I'm going to get to the point in just a moment. The, the thing was, is that it was always very simple to figure out what that meant. Because it always used to be there are 100, roughly 100 Space Marines per company. But then the Primaris happened. And because there were, you know, all of these old, all of these old Space Marine units, they were done in fives and tens. You know, that generally like a, a Devastator squad, for example, was 10 Space Marines, five of which took, oh, well, four of which could take a heavy weapon. Now, when the, when the Primaris Marines came out, you now had these units of aggressors, for example, that are in units of maximum of six, which is not an even number. And it's very difficult to make 100 flat with a company. So the thing I was really excited about with the Ninth Edition Codex was how they were going to reconcile all of these differences into how a company is made. Because my long-term hobby dream isn't to go and win the LVO. My long-term hobby dream is to own a chapter of Space Marines fully painted. That's my dream as a hobbyist, right? And I was really excited for the ninth edition book to really finally drill down into what that looked like. And it sort of does and sort of doesn't. <laughs> I think it's really important, though, because um, 
if you're, I think me and Josh are quite similar in this because I play for my own thematic purposes and whether that's at a competitive tournament or not, it doesn't really matter to me. I'll bring the most fluffy list I can to the most competitive tournament I can because I'm there to build a narrative. Mm. And that's, if you're reading a codex, if you're read actually going through and trying to read a codex, you're probably that way inclined because if you're not going to be reading a codex, you're probably going to skip all that anyway and go and yeah. research online what the most sort of meta list is. So for the purposes of this, sort of how to read a codex, I think you're probably already bought into the fact that it's going to be a quite a narrative experience anyway. And if you're a new player trying to to read a codex, you probably want to start with what on earth you're actually sort of getting context on. That's that's important because if you don't know the army sort of background, then the codex will give you all that. And then when you move on to the rule section, like you were saying, Rach, there's a rule section afterwards. Yeah. That'll give you sort of dynasties, for example, for Necrons. And you might have read about those in the previous bit of lore. And you can start to think, well, that dynasty sounds really cool for the lore. Yeah. How do I make my army look like that? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So you've got to follow it through to a certain extent. If you're a returning player, maybe not so much. There'll be certain bits you look for. I think the biggest change from 8th to 9th for me reading codexes is the addition of crusade rules, which were yeah. never a thing in 8th. And now they've suddenly dumped a massive load of information on you. Um, but you still can't really understand that until you've read the preceding bits about how your army works on the tabletop. And you might want to read the context of that in the law bit. So I think it's important you do do it start to finish. I know it's daunting. Don't think, don't think you have to sit there and read it, you know, every page one after the other after for a two-hour session. <laughs> yeah, you'll be in bed next to me and I'll be fast asleep and you'll be there clutching an oh, Ekron codex till about I three will. in the morning. I'll wake up and your eyes will be glowing and you'll just be saying, says we can, and I'll be really <laughs> confused what's happening. <laughs> yes, what I find, though, as a new person in it, is before I'd sort of become more immersed in the hobby, um, and, you know, I'm talking literally when I bought my first lot of Necrons and I bought a codex with it, as Jack recommended. I sort of, I think it was at that point, like the very new stage where I just really struggled with it because mm. I had really any context about this whole universe. Um, I had absolutely no idea about Necrons, obviously. Um, and obviously I hadn't, you know, built or painted any. And I think it's, you know, now... Personally, um, I don't know about you guys listening, but now that I'm sort of more immersed, as I said, I'm now thinking, OK, I actually really want to read this whole codex now, um, especially now getting into gaming. Um, but I think it's I think it's different for everyone. And as Josh said, you know, everyone sort of would benefit from different parts of it differently. But I don't know. Is there like probably a wrong question to ask, but is there any part of a codex that like you could just say, yeah, bin that off. I'm assuming not, but just in case. Point values, absolutely points values, but bin that off. They change the minute it's released anyway. You don't need to read it. I'm noting you, that. You, yeah, sort of. I mean, the, the points values, like, why? I love that they still print them in these books, but oh, it, <laughs> it, is, it is a lot. The, the days of me... Sitting down, working out an army list on pen and paper are so far gone now yeah. that I just don't do it. Like there are there are there are a myriad of tools out there. There's the Warhammer app, uh, Warhammer 40k app from Games Workshop themselves, which um, probably shouldn't advertise other project products, but uh, there are other products available from external providers uh, that will let you, that will help you build the app and they'll calculate the points all for you because. There have been a number of times where you, where when I was a kid, in fact, where you were adding it up on paper and you didn't carry the one, or somebody had intentionally not carried the one and go, "Here's my list," and you go, "Right, you figured that out by yourself." Um, the problem is, is on this, you've not actually paid for any of these las cannons. Um, <laughs> so this this one thousand seven hundred and fifty point army is actually closer to two and a half thousand points. So this is going to be an interesting fight, um, but. Um, no, I, I, the thing is, is that there are, there are so many different ways to, as you say, there are so many different ways to uh, engage with 
Warhammer, whether it's, you know, I mean, if you, there's, there's, it's such a wide depth and you know, breadth and depth of stuff to um, enjoy and, and engage with that actually there are a number of people out there that will never play a game. Same as there are a number of people out there who will never uh, buy a model. Uh, they'll just read the books, um, you know, because they're just, you're just into it. Um, when it comes down, even when you drill down into people who like to play the game, the types of games of Warhammer that I like to play are ones where my opponent and I come up with the mission we're going to do and we agree the armies we're going to pay play beforehand because we're setting up, we're going to tell a story. We're not actually really going to use a framework from a codex, a core book, a chapter approved, a narrative campaign. We might play a narrative campaign, but the games I really like to do are, I'll tell you what, like with my friend Adam, ADR Wargaming, on uh, YouTube and Instagram, uh, he he came down and I said, we're, we're going to do a game. I want you to take your combat patrol sisters list and see if you can kill Bellacor. That was the game we played, and I had more fun doing that than I did six games of competitive Warhammer at Goonhammer. I enjoyed Goonhammer, but I preferred the narrative, the, the silly game we played, um, Adam and I, of Bellacore versus about 600 points sounds, of sisters. That sounds awesome. To be fair, I think, I, as much as I say I'm competitive, that sounds right up my street as coming up with your own sort of mission and narrative for it. Yeah, it's stuff like, it, it's because, again, I keep going on, about, I'm not actually that old, I'm only 32, but I've been doing this for such a long time that it feels like I've, I, I am very, very old. But when my brother and I, my younger brother and I, were sort of 16 and 14, um, we used to spend days, like on a weekend, during the summer holiday, we'd spend days and days, but like we would play Lord of the Rings Warhammer against each other, so battles of Middle-earth, strategy battles for Middle-earth, and we ha I had this enormous collection of Lord of the Rings models, it's all here now actually, as I was saying earlier, but I had this enormous collection of um, good models and evil models. And what we would do is we would set up in the living room. We would set up on the floor, floor hammer, because, you know, we're cool kids too. And we would, we would recreate the Battle of Osgiliath. And the reason we were able to do that is because our living room had a dimmer switch. And what we would do is every turn is we'd turn the dimmer switch up a little bit more to represent the sun rising Fantastic. and all and all the good guys had to do was survive until the sun had risen and then they would be able to run back to Minas Tirith for the inevitable ba the inevitable battle of Pelennor fields and if they were all killed before the dimmer switch was all the way up that that meant the orcs won and Minas Tirith was you know Brilliant. that people like Faramir for example would not make it back in time not that he really contributed in the films to the battle of the Pelennor in the books he did but in the films he didn't really but, but like yeah it was that kind of thing that's what we used to play and to this day that is the kind of stuff I still like to do so for me the bit that's important is the narrative bit in the beginning so I kind of know what the army's up to if there's an organizational chart, like, for example, in the Custodes Codex on page 24, there is an organizational chart for a um, shield company, um, which is very useful for me building a Custodes army because I'm like, OK, shield captain, two things of custodian guard, a Vexus Praetor, some Terminators and some Praetors. Right. There we go. That's a narrative force right there. I can build that. That's not a problem. Um, you know, that's very important to me. And then I kind of skip to the data sheet so I know actually how to play with them. But beyond that. I don't I don't need stuff like, you know, you know like like the stratagems and stuff like that. Of course I will use them, but that all that stuff comes later for me. So that's kind of how I like to it's you know stuff like in there's so many books out there like the Blood Angels Codex in 8th edition has a load of really cool stuff about a bunch of battles they fought and you go, "Oh, I'd really like to do that one. Let's see if I've got a friend who Let's just see if I've got a friend first, and then see if any of them have got an army that can interact with the crew with, the, with that particular battle. You see what I mean? Whereas for people who are, you know, really into matched play and going to tournaments and all that kind of stuff, that actually they don't really need to know the um, first bit. They just want to need. They just need to know how you know 
how awesome a venerable land raider is and um, how they can how best they can interact. So it's kind of this thing of depending on what you're interested in as a as a person who engages with with codexes even because you might not even need to engage with codexes but like what's your route like what do you want to do and so like the thing for the thing for like a competitive player i've often thought is that what you do is you go and check out what the faction rules are then you check what the data sheets are and how you can best utilize the data sheets within the faction rule so like if you've got a space marine chapter like iron hands for example iron hands are very good at shooting what you're then going to do is you're going to go and look through all of the data sheets for all the units and go which of these are good at shooting and can only be improved by the fact that my rules for shooting are really good and that's how they kind of navigate through the book they go back and forth between these two bits whereas for me i go and read the background and then i'll look at the data sheets later maybe and then i'll maybe look at stuff like you know what what the what the martial qatar is for example yeah, it's a good point. I think it's it's pretty much like that, really. I mean, you you decide what you want to do, um, and then you decide which bits you want to read. Really, um, if you're not sure, though, it's always good to start with the actual immersion of what your what your mm. actual army you've chosen to do is. So, I think it's, if you're a beginner listening to this, then just go for just go for page one. Read that really nice inside cover page, um, <laughs> and then go from there if you start getting a bit bored then potentially you know that you can skip ahead you can go back and forth i think the important bits are that you you cement what you want to do and that you kind of understand the more complicated rules which are coming in for ninth edition because they are i mean you've got sort of martial guitars as josh Mm. just said and you've got necrons you've got your dynastic codes and things and those bits are kind of a little bit out of place i think because they they come before you knowing that any of what any of what your actual army can do mm. without that so maybe if you if you've got these sorts of rules you read at first and think well what on earth does firing a auric weapon mean twice well you, you you're obviously missing something because it's not your fault you're missing something because games workshop have kind of put it in the wrong place effectively um so you want to potentially look at your data sheets first and then you want to um to have a look at that bit as well so you can knit back and forth but maybe the law's the important bit if you're into that because then you can go oh i know what an auric weapon is i would definitely say so because i think if i'd have turned straight away to the uh the gameplay rules i would have probably well probably wouldn't be doing this podcast because it would have Mm. scared the life out of me and i'd have thought what on earth is this so i think obviously with you know with the law at the front probably start with that that's where i started admittedly i then put down the codex and have only very rarely picked it up but i think once you when you start getting more into the hobby i think you sort of have more of an urge to actually properly get into reading the codex especially if you're going to play games as well Mm. Um, yeah so if you want to get really really you know really frisky with your with your narrative and your codexes (laughs) and stuff do you know what else I recommend? I recommend reading the core rule book from start from cover to I was cover. Very scared oh, of what no. you are actually gonna <laughs> suggest doing then, Josh. So I'm glad that it's just about the core rule book. To be He's gonna suggest battle types of dragons again. I can sense oh, it. Oh, no, don't say it. <laughs> if you want to get into the into, into how to read a codex, I suggest you buy Battle Time Stormcast Eternal and start collecting <laughs> some dragons. No. The, the core book, right? It is a mighty tome. It truly is. It is a mighty, weighty tome with lots and lots and lots of stuff in it. But what it does have is it has everything you could possibly need to know from a starter perspective about what's going on, who everyone is, why, where, how. It has all of it in the core in the core book from start to finish. I was because Alice was asking me this very question the other day, and I literally I went and got the core book down, and I was like, right, it's like you know three hundred pages or whatever it is, and I was like, the first like you know three quarters of it, that is all narrative background and pictures of really nicely painted. Oh, is it? Mm. I didn't yeah. know this. I did yeah, not know this. All of it. The core book has got it all in. In fact, I was what I was just actually looking for just then as well is that I think the core book might be the only book that still contains the same intro to every codex that i remember buying i don't know if you remember it 
Jack, how nearly every single one started with It is the 41st millennium. For more than a hundred centuries, the Emperor has sat immobile on the golden throne of Earth. He is the master of mankind by the will of the gods and master of a million worlds by the might of his inexhaustible armies. That one. Even I Which recognize definitely that. definitely not off by heart, no. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon I he know. says that to himself in the mirror every morning. I do. It's how I justify my existence. <laughs> well, it's because the final paragraph... Oh, just, hang on, I'm just going to get up in front of me so I definitely get it right. Uh, That's cheating. This isn't Google podcast. I told you it was. Man and, wo- man, and, man and woman read internet. Man reads internet, woman is confused. <laughs> it, it is that to be a man in such times is to be one amongst untold billions. It is to live in the cruelest and most bloody regime imaginable. These are the tales of those times. Forget the power of technology and science, for so much has been forgotten, never to be relearned. Forget the promise of progress and understanding. For in the grim dark future there is only war. There is no peace amongst the stars. Only an eternity of carnage and slaughter and the laughter of thirsting gods. Pretty epic. I'm not, not gonna lie. The hairs on my neck are standing up. I'm feeling things I've not felt before. Uh, right. oh, thanks, Jack. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers for that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean uh <laughs> I'm sure, do you know what's really weird is I've definitely, definitely heard that and read it. Yeah. But what, But where would that be at the front of my Necron Codex? No, it won't be at the front of your Necron no. Codex. Where on earth have I read it then? I am, um, uh, yeah, spoiler, I do actually sit above you at night whilst you sleep and just recite oh, that into God's your sake. ears. <laughs> I do the same thing I'm with... Being uh, I do the same thing with Alice, but I'm just whispering her to her the the intro to the Age of Darkness book because I really want her to get into Horus Heresy so that we can both <laughs> play a much more complicated game. It is a game of legend. Josh, go to sleep. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but the galaxy is in flames. The Emperor's glorious vision for humanity is in ruins. His favoured son, Horus, has turned from his father's light. And if you think Josh should be a uh, audible narrator, then please feed this back to us because I know it's his <laughs> secret dream. It is. It is my secret dream. I would like to be the next Jonathan Keeble. I think I think you could do it. Do you reckon? I I don't do very good. Um, well, I suppose they don't really quite a lot of the time. But like my voice, my voice impersonations range, whilst okay. It doesn't reach quite the same heights that the current professional Black Library uh, narrators do. Um, I think I'd be better at choosing voices for some characters. Like if you ever listen to the first couple of Blood Angels books and you hear Mephiston's voice, you will kind of cry with laughter because this is supposed to be a really scary librarian that everyone has shunned. And And you give us an impression. Yeah, I can. He goes... I am Mephiston, the chief <laughs> librarian of the Blood Angels. And you're like, oh, yes. <laughs> what is this voice? When well, he's supposed to be like, he, he's like, doesn't speak very often. He's supposed to like, when he does, it's supposed to like send a chill through everyone's bones because he's the Lord of Death. And then he has, I am Mephiston. That definitely did not send a chill through my bones. No. The chief librarian of the Blood Angels. And it's like, okay, great. And then Dante's just over there like, I am Dante. And it's like, yes, that's the voice. But um, it's, pro- yeah. it's probably better than the uh, Damocles books with the guy who narrates them. He, everyone's quite normal. The space marines are just like, oh, yeah, so I'm a space marine. And then, and then along comes the Tau and he just turns inherently racist. Um, and it just goes sort of, oh, yes, oh, Shava, what a cast. And you're like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> yeah, they just did that on, um, I, I'm just listening to Lost in the Damned at the minute, the second Horus Air uh, Siege of Terror book, which we won't go into too much because I know that you yes, are reading them. No um, I know that you're on book two and this is technically book 57. So by the oh, time yes, you get so... to book 57, <laughs> you would have forgotten anything I did say now. Because even at a rate of one per month per uh, for the next, well, even at one per month, it'll take you four years to get back to this point. But anyway, uh, there will. is a it character will. in The Lost and the Damned whose name is Katsuhiro, and I was surprised uh, that they did a voice for it. Anyway, we're not here to talk about that. 
<laughs> I need to hear this now because I um I presume they would, but I've never listened to the book to uh, to know that they have. So <laughs> I need to catch snippets. But anyway, yeah, yeah, yes, we, dig- we digress. <laughs> they, we, we, do, digress. we do digress, which I love about a podcast. It keeps it interesting. Uh, well, hopefully, it keeps it interesting. <laughs> It keeps the listeners on their toes and it gives them a longer amount of content to consume whilst they are currently right now going, when the hell are they going to actually open a codex? Because I'm sat here with all of them and I don't know which one to start with. No, I assume well, I assume those of you at home that are listening along might be in the car or hobbying or doing something yes. equally awesome. Yeah, no, I mean, in terms of... Um, that leads nicely on to, obviously, in terms of our actual episode one... Um, we, well, I don't know, do you want to, should we announce what we're doing now or should we keep it, keep it as a little secret? I don't know. Do you think the listeners have earned it? I don't know. It depends how many are listening, but we'll never know. <laughs> do, you think, do you think we've earned it? I think we've earned no, it. No, we have not earned it. it. <laughs> I think we can reveal what we're going to talk about first because it... I mean, it, most people might have guessed anyway. I mean, it was, seems, I mean, actually someone did message me on Instagram saying... Is it this army? Because that would be really obvious, and I hope it is. Obviously, I didn't reply, but I mean... So obviously, the first codex we're going to start with is my homebrew rules for my own made-up <laughs> chapter, um, where I've written about four... Dragons. Th- it's about The first codex <laughs> we're going to start with is Battletome Stormcast Eternals. We tricked you, 40k fans. That's what we did. <laughs> and good night. Losers. You're going to hear about dragons and Garda Steel Soul, and I'm going to pass out from excitement because I love it so much. <laughs> so, should we, should we actually reveal? I mean, I'm making it like such a big deal. So, the next so episode one, uh, we will be looking at the Necrons Codex, which probably comes as no surprise to any of you because. I mean, that's that's the armor I'm doing. Um, I've got it next to me now. I'm going to take it to bed with me and read it for the first time ever. Um, we will have a special guest on. Um, uh, we've already arranged it. So that's very exciting. And we'll obviously sort of keep you informed and announce who it's going to be. Um, but yeah, so hopefully you guys will tune in again to listen to the many tangents we go on um, and hopefully Josh will not in any future episodes talk about dragons. <laughs> well, you've no idea what's coming for Stormcast Eternals. Not Stormcast <laughs> Eternals, Age of Sigma. <laughs> I've got dragons on the brain, so that's a real problem. Uh, Age you? Of Sigma, I, I, yeah, just a slight, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, Only a I, bit. Because you see, the, the problem is, Rachel... There are two battle tomes coming out for Age of Sigma. It is the Fire Slayers and the Ideneth Deepkin. And they are going to be really nice books. And I'm going to want to buy them and I'm going to read them. And then we're going to get to recording about Necrons. And then you're going to be like, so Josh, talk to me about Necrons. And we're going, great, yeah, cool. So um, the Fire Slayers are half-naked angry dwarves who, um, who famously are the Slayers. Uh, you know, one of their most, fam- most famous of the Fire Slayers is, of course, Gotrek of Gotrek and Gurnison fame and Gotrek and Felix books, which are fantastic books. That model is available now. This is what's going to happen. I know, and it's going to get all confusing. Happening. It's fine, I'll just mute you at that point. <laughs> I'll be like, oh, uh, Josh has lost connection. <laughs> Hopefully it comes back. You will not silence me. <laughs> um, but actually, I think, I think, I think you know, because you and I did talk about this, you did promise me that if yes. we did do all 20 codexes... <laughs> Which we will, we will. Even if we do... only have ourselves listening to the podcast, yeah. we will carry on and yeah. do them all. And then yeah. maybe uh, go into other things, like dragons. Like battle tomes. Yes. Yes. Like, 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 like where I do an hour long special about each dragon, Krondis, Karazai, the Storm Drake Guard, the Night Dragon, I mean, Kronis, to be honest, all of it. I wouldn't even be needed for that podcast. You could just take it on your own. Uh, well, <laughs> I think you would need to be there because then it's just man screams <laughs> about dragons. <laughs> that could be the title. That's man when the podcast just changes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, if, if 10th edition isn't out by then. It, we'll just do like Josh takes over the podcast for a while and it's just about dragons and then when the codexes come back and start going on their next edition's release in 10th edition that's when you come back is that what we're going to do? Yeah I think that sounds like a plan to be honest. That sounds legitimate. Let us yes. know 
Let us know by emailing us. Do we have an email address? Oh, we do not have an email address yet. I'm not that organised. This is uh, all okay, come well, about very quickly. We should make let one. Let me know. Let me know currently. If you're listening to this, let me know what if you would like us to do the Age of Sigmar Battle Tomes by emailing me at therealwarhipster at gmail.com or messaging us on Instagram. You can either message me directly at the War Hipster, you can message Rachel at the Warhammer Girl, or you can message the podcast account, which is Codex and Coffee. Yeah, it is indeed. Not Coffee and Codex, which is what I kept calling it. I think everyone keeps calling it that. It's doing my head in. It's Codex and Coffee. To be fair, I think I called it that the other day as well, but there we go. No. Yep, so it's at Codex and Coffee. Um... And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed listening. Thank you so much, Jack, for joining us. Your wisdom is fantastic. <laughs> Will you come back, Jack? Oh, for you, Josh, I'd do anything. Not for me, his fiance, though. Never, no, never anything. I've, I've for done me. enough. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is a have... really, this is a really awkward bit of podcast that I struggle with when I'm recording them. Is actually saying goodbye and how to say it and how to sign off. Because it always um, seems very forced. Well, I have been scowled. I have been scowled. <laughs> Different from the norm. <laughs> <laughs> Not I am scowled, I have been scowled. Should we go for like a different pop culture style quote every 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 month? Yes. Because we could start with, you know, Lord of the Rings and say, you know, I will not say, do not weep, for not all tears are. That kind of thing. And then people will just be like, oh, this is the end. Now it makes sense. Now I get it. That is a brilliant idea. What we're actually doing right now is we're barreling towards a Sopranos ending where we're just going to cut it off mid-war.